So let's get into some interviews then, because I think there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot more that we've learned. Dakor has got all of the great bits uh, collated for us. So let's have a chat. Right. So um, some stuff with Steve first. When these events culminate uh, in Eternity's End and play out, they are meant to be a conclusion to a long series of building stories we've seen uh, weaving their way through multiple expansions. The Warcraft story goes on, but we're closing one book before another begins. Now, this does mean that they're really viewing, and especially with what was said earlier, and I mean, Warcraft 3 footage is like the start of the trailer for this. Also, Eternity's End. Is the Night Elf campaign. (laughs) So, (laughs) yeah. Um, this is, in a way, an ending to the story of Warcraft 3, as the Blizzard developers currently see it. And I, that is how it is. I've seen one or two people try to get out of that, squirm their way out of that, but the interviews very much confirm that that is what this is. Mm-hmm. Um, look, that's the deal, you know? Zoval created the Lich King. Zoval is why Arthas became the Lich King, because the Dreadlords enticed Arthas to fall at Zoval's command. We'll actually get into that. It's in one of these interviews. So, you know, this is the end of Warcraft 3 in a way. The Burning Legion was literally set, and this is a video I recorded today, the Burning Legion was set into motion by Zoval. That's like the current story. It was whenever Sargaris came upon a world, a void-infested world, where he met these Nathrazim, and the Nathrazim basically were like, yo, mate, the Void is pretty spooky, spookier than those demons. And that is what gave Sargaris the big spook that led to the whole Burning Legion existing. Of course, the Burning Legion invasion is Warcraft 3, and, yeah. of course, the Lich King. Yeah, and that's obviously why That's everyone, what we're ending here. Yeah, but that's why everyone saw Legion as the end, because that's what I immediately felt. Oh, the Legion's wrapping up the Burning Legion. We've come full circle. That's the end of one of Warcraft 3 plot lines. The victory that went unnoticed, that yeah. whisper. Yeah, so, like, that is what it is, everyone, right? That mm-hmm. is just what it is. Um, this is the end of Warcraft 3. I think for a lot of people, that feels rather insulting because it's basically just saying, hey, you know what Warcraft 3 you enjoyed? Ah, uh, well, actually, it was like this. Yeah, because- And that's not <laughs> satisfying to people because it obviously wasn't intended that way. Like, when you go through Warcraft 3 and, like, those scenes as presented, like, this is a recontextualization. That's different from a retcon. Retcon is retroactive continuity. It is changing, literally changing events, like, you know, um, just changing the events. Whereas this is just new info that recontextualizes them. But it recontextualizes them in such a way that it changes their, I mean, I don't know, emotional texture to the point where it feels different. Hmm. So it isn't the retcon kind of feels like one. So that's, I think, why that really rubbed people the wrong way. Um, and it does just sort of feel like they've came in, they've created Zoval, and they've inserted him into the old thing that everyone respects as almost a way to bootstrap us respecting Zoval as a villain. Whereas versus Sargaris, is like Sargaris was extremely slowly built up over years and years and years and years and years. Mm-hmm. Same goes for the Titans. Whereas the Shadowlands, they were like, I mean, basically it's Game of Thrones season eight. Yeah. As in... If, if we're going to take them at their word here that, you know, this book started in Warcraft 3 and now the book is ending before we open up the new book in the series of Warcraft, then you're basically saying you had it all paced out nice, 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 and then at the very end, you had to introduce <laughs> the actual villain of the story, half a trillion concepts, and then do it like that. And, you know, I know people like to clown on Steve the Newser because he tweeted about really enjoying Game of Thrones Season 8, but yeah. whenever this stuff just kind of comes out like this, I mean, it's a little bit of a rough look... Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, if if you're like, I enjoy X, and everyone goes, well, we have problems with X, and then that person goes and makes Y, we see the same problems in X in Y, then you go, you're going to draw that conclusion, no matter what happens, no matter who's actually involved, who's in charge, stuff yeah. like that. But to me, it comes across like, I don't know, like I, I really hate to really, really, you know, it's their game, they can do what they want, but also I'm just like, man, the... Wrath of the Lich King felt like the end of the Lich King storyline that everyone cared about. Le- yeah, it should have Le- yeah. ended there. Yeah, Legion felt like the end of the storyline of the Burning Legion. But, like you're saying, they bootstrap stuff on top of it instead of going, okay, that's the line in the sand. We'll do something new. They're like, yeah. Nah. I mean, it would likely have been even better if they just went, you know what? What's unsolved? Because I can't see them... Well, I guess they did this. Was they, it was fair enough that they looked at Bolvar and went, oh, well, that's not solved. But they should have just, I think they should have just ran with old God stuff, probably. 
Probably, or like do something different with the Bulvar. And, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I, like, I mean, it's not for me to say what the next expansion should be. I can, you know, do we can do some ideas and have some fun with it. Mm. Um, but yeah, this whole like Warcraft 3 Eternity's End kind of like uh, framing, I think, uh, I think that has very broadly been a big miss. And I think a lot of people have looked at that. I think they have felt hubris and they have not been pleased. Um, and that's, you know, that's not me telling people what to do. Yeah. That is just my, I'm trying to understand what I'm seeing. And that's vaguely how I understand it. I mean, if that sounds like bullshit to you, do let me know. That's what it feels like to me. I mean, if I, if I, if I'm going to be completely candid about it, the start of that video felt like getting punched in the nose. Honestly, as a long time Warcraft fan, it, it did feel mildly insulting to my investment in the world yeah so i didn't have a, like any sort of emotional reactions it's like well that's that is not how i would have opened this video given the current circumstances and i really makes me wonder what their end goal is uh, yeah overall. there is a bit of me that's just like uh what were you smoking to think that that would have worked out well <laughs> yeah well i mean like to i don't want to go too hard into this because it's pure speculation of what they're thinking doing which is you know obviously not a good idea because I don't, I'm not them. I don't know any of them. It's sort of unfair, but there are two options really: cut and run. In, ter in terms of an audience base, cut and run. Bring whoever's willing to come with you, or try to make platitudes to the to the audience that you've done wrong by, even if maybe you don't feel you have. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's maybe one of the issues they're running into. And I'd love to know how they. I'd love to know how they discussed that intro to that video. Because if I were thinking about it from that perspective, I would say that's an extremely dangerous thing to do and could have could have risked aggravating the audience that they should be almost apologizing to. Yeah, the, look, the way that you open that video is you have your game director sit down, you have your game director say, hey, everyone, look, we know that while we have made loads of you really happy and while loads of people have really enjoyed Shadowlands, we also know that some of our decisions didn't land with players and we know that, you know, just a few aspects didn't work out as well as we'd hoped. We're really sorry. Yeah. Our our job is to make the best Azeroth that we can for you to to have fun in with your guild. This is what our plan is in the near future. Mm. And by the way, after this, things are going to feel pretty different. Maybe a bit more familiar. Mm. You just, you know, if you have like Ian just sit down and say that to the camera then what you will immediately will have, because like, you know, all the people that are primed to be all like Rrr, Shadowlands. Yeah. If you do that, then you immediately cut all of them off. Yep. You kind of like deny them their, their ammunition. Now, Ian, like I think Ian, but they've said similar ish things in some of not similar ish as in uh, admitting, you know, that things got, well, got a bit fucky. Um, but they've said, you know, about the Azeroth thing, um, you know, the next expansion being Azerothian. And I have the quote here from Steve, actually, yep. they have said that in these interviews. If they had to just open the video with that, but I think mm. it's just that thing, you know, it's got to be big core, you know, it's got to be big corporate America marketing. Fuck yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe, <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe drop the line of Coke, but unofficially, yes. <laughs> you know, that's what that's, it feels like it's got to be that. And that's why it almost gets like marched out to, yeah. to sort of die. Whereas, you know, like if they did a big cock up, I, I feel like you would, I mean, I suppose you could say they did in the management of, of Endwalker that resulted in a delay. Like, what do you have? Well, you have the game director, like, I mean, okay, I was, I was going to say bow. I mean, that's obviously like a, a cultural yeah, that's how norm, of yeah. course. But, um, I mean, look, it worked. Whatever form of saying sorry, yeah. man's clearly torn up and in tears of, uh, you know, over how it's went. And that, like, how can you be angry at that? Yeah. So yeah. there's just a whole bunch of these things from a, a public communications um perspective yeah just where... <laughs> man it's the it's i guess it's it's the brushing everything under the rug as opposed because like it's never they're never going to be allowed to apologize they just will not have this way in that company that's not how marketing happens in american companies it just isn't that's mm. never going to happen without a massive massive paradigm change so they're never going to get to apologize but they could have at least asked for trust yeah which I, is the thing where it's like you know just like listen we know trust us we're gonna execute on this we're gonna do it right yeah but they don't like so like debbie said you know the video wasn't about 10 it was about 9 2 that's uh you yeah. know what the focus is and sh what it should have been i'd say mm -hmm. they're true i don't think the video should have been about 10 either yeah. i think it should have been about 
World of Warcraft developer update. Mm. And I, I think the 98% of that video should have been about 9.2. So I'm like, I'm almost entirely in agreement with you. I yeah. just think that like, knowing what a lot of the community was thinking, and I think being able to intuit uh, some people's responses to a very Shadowlands-y vibe, yeah. I think it would have been the pragmatic thing from a communications perspective to yeah. try to have got, you know get out ahead because I think the 9-2 stuff could have made all the Shadowlands people very happy, but even just acknowledging how some other people feel, I think yeah. that would have helped a lot of other people as well and probably would have... It's like, even if you just have the, the notion of, oh, okay, so they actually really talked about how they got it at the start of that video. Yeah. And if that spread amongst the community, mm. that, and because that was spread vir virally, uh, yeah. you know, sort of the, the spreading mechanism, um, that would have been, I think, a very positive thing for them. Um, so, you know, I think some of this is just how kind of like big corporate game development talks yeah. to people and yeah, they don't communicate yeah and I, I think there's probably uh quite a few companies that are either younger and doing things new or maybe some companies that have really kind of embraced the new way of doing things mm. probably have handled that in a bit of a different way now there is some good news here i think for a lot of people yeah actually for everybody because even if you love shadowlands i mean you only love shadowlands because you love azeroth and for the people who don't like shadowlands generally because they prefer Azeroth. So yeah. the good news is uh, the story that unfolds will hopefully feel very organic. There are many facets of the Warcraft universe still waiting for us to explore in both the cosmic sense of Eternity's End and the more grounded events in Azeroth featuring characters we know and love with many Ares yet in Azeroth to be discovered. Now, when I see that from Steve, I'm thinking of the Dragon Isles. Um, I'm thinking there are some islands. There's Tyler Beam, there's Plunder Isle. There's a few of those that exist. There's the back uh, there's, there's probably more of Azeroth. Uldaz, and um, Aldaz, Uldorus, and all the other mm. Ulds that Mother uh, speaks of in uh, you know in Battle for Azeroth, which is very much saying there's loads of Uldaman, Ulduar like facilities across Azeroth, and that's probably in continents and stuff that we don't know about. So, mm. like, this has me very excited in a way for 10.0 because it's kind of telling me that 9.2 is like the big, big hurrah of mega cosmic Warcraft yeah. and that we're very much going home in the next expansion. Um, so to me, it is like overall long-term very good news. We got a patch that thematically isn't matching with people, but a patch that does seem, uh, because of patch 9.1.5 and a few of the other things, it does seem to be meeting people's gameplay concerns. Hmm. Uh, while at the same time, we're finding out that the new expansion probably is going to you know, return to Azeroth. So I think that's like a, you know, it might be hard to feel it right now, but I feel like that is quite good news overall in balance. Yeah, I believe so. I believe so. Um, now there's this bit, which is... Uh, right, so this is the other thing. So this particular segment translated from a Chinese interview has been rather controversial. <laughs> Nuance tone and the exact meaning can be lost in translation so many people are conflicted in the exact meaning here so this is translated steve denoser this is actually the ending of a series of storylines that began with warcraft 3 the jailer's conspiracy runs throughout such as instructing the dreadlord to induce uh, in, yeah induce arthas to fall we will connect this series of grand plots in this version so this update and usher in the final ending now what I will say is from my current understanding of the lore, going through every single tidbit they've dropped, this is what it appears to be. Because you have like Morganus and Arthas, a bunch of the more deep things that Kelth has had. Yeah, like the Jailer is all over Warcraft 3. We actually did a full video on this hmm. um, a few months ago. It, it got buried because it came out at a, I mean, obviously a pretty rough time given the investigation and everything. Um, so, you know, do check up that video on Warcraft 3 that we did. I think it will at least help to make a lot of these things make sense. Because I think an issue is, you know, we had to like dive through all the lore and to pick out all the bits and then present it to people. I mean, loads of people say, no, you're lying. I'm like, <laughs> well, okay, we have loads of like, uh, sources very directly in game and developer interviews. Um, a lot of people were confused. A lot of people were like, oh shit, I didn't pick up on that. So, um, you know, it's there. Yeah. It's there. It is a followable storyline for sure. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, from the developer preview, uh, Shadowlands is the final chapter of one book of the Warcraft saga. 
and Eternity's End serves as the final chapter of one book of the Warcraft saga. So, there you go. 